Today I'm going to talk about broadband giant transformers. They're used in a lot of radio circuits, receivers, transmitters and antennas. If you've got a dipole, it may have a ballon at the top and that's probably a broadband type transformer. As a material, ferrite has what is known as high permeability. That means you don't need many turns of wire on it to get a high inductance. That's important for solid state, low impedance RF power amplifiers. It's not just high power transmitters and antenna balance that ferrites are useful. Inside every AM radio is a ferrite rod. Without it, you'd have needed a larger frame or external antenna. And here's another use, as balance mixers, or otherwise known as product detectors or balance modulators in transmitter and receiver projects. They're very cheap to build, just two ferrites and four diodes. You can buy ferrites as two whole TV balance formers, such as this, for around $2 for a pack of two. That's enough to make a balance modulator and is a lot cheaper than if you were to buy pre-made modules such as the SBL1 or TUF3. The other alternative are toids, round around half an inch or so in diameter. Either will work for most applications. If you see an old TV by the side of the road, particularly topical as we're going digital, check to see if there's a ballon probably plugged into its antenna socket. That comes in a small plastic case and was commonly used for indoor antennas or others that use 300 ohm feed line. Inside the ballon is probably one of these and you can never be without too many of them. One thing that does scare people off is actually winding them because it's not necessarily as simple as just having a primary and secondary winding as two separate wires. Instead, wires often have to be twisted together if you don't have them connected properly, then it's not going to work. That's why when you look at the diagram, there are two little black dots. They indicate the same side of the toroids winding. Often there's a crossover. That means the end of one coil joins to the start of another. Here you can actually see the start of the winding on one side connect with the end of another winding. That aligns with the diagram where the top of one winding connects to the bottom of another. You might have come across the term bifiler and trifiler. That just means the number of wires. In the case here of a 1 to 4 ballon, there's two windings. Therefore, it's bifiler. The 1 to 1 you see here has three wires. Therefore, it's trifiler. All that means is you have to think ahead. Are you going to have two wires or three wires? If you get it wrong, then you'll need to unwind it and start again. Then there's the wire to use. It needs to be insulated. For high power applications, it may need to be getting towards one millimeter in diameter or more. For low power though, something like 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters is okay and that allows more turns to be wound onto the ferrite if required. Old power transformers are good sources of enameled covered copper wire. Or you can use the yoke off an old TV tube. But as we go to flat screen, they are rapidly becoming museum pieces. Need to estimate the diameter of wire? Some old fashioned countries still use gauge numbers but I think millimetres, or fractions of them, is easier to work with. Just wind 10 turns of wire, close round, on a pen or pencil. Bunch the windings up so the wires touch, and measure the length in centimetres. The length of the turn turns in centimetres is equal to the diameter of each wire in millimetres. So, if your coil is 5mm long, then that means your wire diameter is 0.5mm. If you look very carefully, you may be able to see that the turns are twisted. 
that's done before you wind the wire onto the former. It's worthwhile to work out how much you actually need. Think about the number of turns you're going to wind on your ferrite and allow a little bit extra for the ends. Having a look at this two hole ferrite ballon former, it's about 6mm wide, about 3mm between the holes, so one turn around it is probably going to be around 2cm of wire. I'm allowing a little bit of fat there just in case you get it wrong. Most of the uh, projects require around 8 or 10 turns. That's enough for a broadband former for a band like 80 or 40 or 20 metres. Uh, with around 10 turns then you're going to need maybe 20 centimetres of wire for each turn. So if it's two or three turns then you're going to need around 40 to 60 centimetres of wire. Go with a little bit more just to be on the safe side. It's a similar deal with this round toroid or former. In this case about 5 millimetres, 5 millimetres, then about 3 or 4. So again we're up to around 20 millimetres per turn. Now this is where we twist our wire. You may not be able to see it but I've got two wires which means that we're going to be making a bifilar ferrite toroid. Just by hand twist the first few centimetres. We'll put them into the chuck of a hand drill and tighten it up like so. You might not want it to be too tight just in case you break the wire. You just anchor the handle of the drill and we need to pull it tight but not too tight and hold it up here with the pliers. And so just uh, tighten that up there and so we turn the hand drill and you'll see twists appear in the wire and that looks like about right two twists or so per centimetre nice evenly twisted so now we can wind it I use the TV bell and hole type the number of turns is through one hole and in the other and out the other. So we just, we don't want to be too harsh with the wire in case the enamel chips off. It doesn't need to be pulled ultra tight. So we just keep winding like so notice that I've left enough tail end about three centimeters or so In a lot of balance modulators, because they are broadband, the number of turns isn't that critical. Somewhere between 8 and 10 is, is normally okay for the middle HF range. Um, when the windings get a little bit tight, um, it can be a bit hard to poke them in, which is one reason why you don't want to use wire that's too thick. On the other hand, wire that's too thin is a bit fragile. This is the completed ferrite transformer. Just need to open out the windings on the ends, just untwist them a bit because they need to be tested. You need to work out which wire goes where and also you want to verify that there are no shorts between them. Um, you need to strip off a bit off each end, maybe four or five millimeters. You can use a hobby knife for that. Um, there are other various methods that some people use, but dentists don't recommend them. 
Now just be aware that the black dot on the diagram coincides with one side of your winding so that winding might coincide with the black dot of that winding and this one with that one. We want the start of this winding to match up with the finish of the other. Now with our audible continuity indicator we'll test to see if it's okay. As this is a bifiler winding all of the ends of all of the coils should be connected as far as DC goes anyway and we'll just check that with the meter to see if that is the case. We've got one probe on the tap and another here. There is continuity. We'll try the other one. That's the same. And between the two that aren't connected to the common connection, there's also continuity. So this coil has been wired up correctly. If it wasn't wired correctly, then you would have shorted one of the coils. And when you did DC measurements, then you wouldn't have found continuity with the other. That's the bifolar coil ready to use and costing barely a dollar's worth of parts. The same principle applies if you were to wind it on a round toid like this. As for trifolar coils like this, similar principles except it's a little bit harder as you've got three windings and very often you have a primary winding that's not connected to the common tap which may only be connected to two of the three windings. So that's it. Winding coils isn't as hard as many people think, but it's a great skill that will be very useful for many radio and antenna projects.